Chapter 1 Birthing the Environmentally Responsible Aviation Initiative For over a century, NASA and its predecessor, the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, NACA, have undertaken research and technology development that directly contributed to establishing air transportation as a cornerstone of our way of life. These efforts led to advances across the spectrum of study, from a basic understanding of the science of flight to practical engineering achievements that transformed concepts into reality. Although the shape and speed of commercial airliners have not changed significantly since the late 1950s, many aspects of performance, such as range and fuel efficiency, and environmental impacts including noise and emissions, have improved tremendously. By the beginning of the 21st century, however, it became clear that more work was necessary. Heightened sensitivity to, and understanding of, the impact of aviation on the environment and the reduced availability of low-cost energy place the spotlight directly on aircraft efficiency and reducing environmental impacts. This realization spawned one of NASA's most ambitious aviation projects to date. NASA researchers believe that in the second quarter of this century, commercial airline companies could save as much as $250 billion thanks to so-called green aviation technology pioneered by the agency and industry partners under NASA's Environmentally Responsible Aviation, ERA, Project Act. This six-year effort, which concluded in 2015, focused on development of technologies that will help aircraft manufacturers to reduce fuel consumption time, exhaust emissions, and aircraft noise by increasing engine efficiency and improving overall aircraft design. The agency initiated the ERA project to explore, mature, and document the feasibility, benefits, and technical risks of vehicle concepts and enabling airframe and propulsion technologies originally identified in the agency's Fundamental Aeronautics Program, FAP, and, in particular, the Subsonic Fixed Wing, SFW, project in order to mitigate the impact of aviation on the environment. NASA ultimately contributed more than $400 million to the project, which also received approximately $250 million from industry partners including Boeing and Pratt and & Whitney. The ERA project began in 2009 as part of the NASA Aeronautics Research Mission Directorate's Integrated Systems Research Program. Current generation aircraft already benefit from NASA investments in aeronautical research of past decades. The development of digital fly-by-wire flight controls, supercritical airfoils, and winglets during the early 1970s and 1980s improved flying safety, controllability, and fuel efficiency, but most important, they became standard features of many modern aircraft. Once fully matured, technologies developed through the ERA project promise to become standard features of future generations of commercial air transports. Forecasts call for the nation's air transportation system to undergo signified can expansion up to 2035. Unless new technologies are introduced, Adverse environmental impacts from increased air operations could curtail the ability of the next-generation air transportation system, NextGen, to accommodate projected growth in demand for air transportation. To offset these impacts, NASA implemented the ERA project to pioneer technologies that might be sufficiently mature to meet midterm goals, within the first 5 to 10 years, for reducing community noise footprints, fuel burn, and nitrogen oxide, NOx, emissions. Researchers would also attempt to determine the potential benefits of various advanced aircraft configurations beyond the conventional tube and wing design that has been standard since the earliest days of commercial air transportation. If successful, NASA scientists believe, such new technologies and configurations could cut airline fuel consumption in half, reduce pollute tie-in by as much as 75%, and drop noise pollution to nearly one-eighth of current levels. One simultaneously, the Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, is working to implement significant improvements to the national airspace system between 2012 and 2025. The advent of NextGen is transforming America's air traffic control system from a land-based radar network to one using global positioning system, GPS, satellite technology and replacing radio communications with digital data transfer. FAA officials expect this approach to shorten routes, save time and fuel, reduce traffic delays, increase airport capacity, and permit controllers to monitor and manage aircraft with greater safety margins. Two project goals and relevance for planning purposes ERA project managers define first generation technology, i.e., circa 2015, as N plus 1, second generation, that is, circa 2020, as N plus 2, and third generation, the target date of about 2035, as N plus 3. Researchers were challenged to mature a variety of promising new technologies and to study vehicle concepts that together might simultaneously meet NASA's subsonic transport system level metrics for noise, emissions, and fuel burn within the N plus 2 timeframe. To that end, 
the ERA project challenged researchers to focus on technologies in four research areas. These included innovative aerodynamic flow control concepts for drag reduction, improvements in composite materials for reducing aircraft's structural weight, advanced ultra-high bypass, UHB, engine designs for improving fuel efficiency and noise reduction, and advanced combustor designs for reducing NOx emissions. Airframe and propulsion technology sufficiently mature for full-scale development by 2020 could enter into service by 2025. The Aeronautics Research Mission Directorates, ARMD, focus on long-term, cutting-edge research that expands the boundaries of aeronautical knowledge for the benefit of the broad aeronautics community directly supported NASA's mission to pioneer scientific discovery, aeronautics research, and space exploration. At the time, both the agency's aeronautics and space research and technology activities were focused on lightweight integrated structures and environmentally friendly, high-performance propulsion systems. Additionally, such factors as continuing growth in air traffic volume, the vital role of air transportation on the global economy, and concerns about the overall environmental impacts of aviation added focus to the National Aeronautics Research and Development Policy that was established by President George W. Bush in 2006. To address such concerns in the context of that policy, NASA set a five goals for noise reduction, emissions, and energy consumption. Originally developed under the SFW project, these goals were updated jointly with the ERA project to be consistent with the goals of the National Plan for Aeronautics Research and Development, which had also been approved by President Bush in 2007. As a result, ERA project research would have far-reaching effects on civil and military aviation with a focus on energy efficiency national security, aviation safety, and enhanced mobility. Three, the ERA project and its partners, including the Air Force Research Laboratory and the FAA, commercial aircraft industry, and academia were united in a common goal of reducing the environmental impact of aviation. In large part, this was due to similarities in military and civil transport capability requirements that offered significant opportunities for leveraging and, where possible, cost-sharing technology development. In fact, the Department of Defense, DOD, FAA, and the airframe and engine companies were already aggressively pursuing energy-efficient, environmentally friendly technologies. The FAA continuous lower energy emissions and noise, clean, program, for example, focused on integrated technology demonstrations to facilitate N plus one technology transition into the commercial air fleet. The DOD identified energy efficiency as a near-term strategic initiative to enable effective mobility. 3. Fayette Collier and Gaudi Bezos O'Connor, Technology Development Project Plan, Environmentally Responsible Aviation Project, ERA 010001, Rev. B. NASA Aeronautics Research Mission Directorate, September 30, 2013, 9-14. Though industry generally looks to near, mid, and far-term horizons like the ERA project, the emphasis is more typically geared toward producing and marketing the next generation of aircraft. The ERA project's focus provided a technology pull well beyond the next generation of vehicle systems. For management by technical challenges at its formulation, planners organized and managed the ERA Phase 1 portfolio around four major subprojects. The Airframe Technology subproject focused on research into lightweight structures, flight dynamics and control, drag reduction, and noise reduction. The Propulsion Technology subproject included research into improving jet engine combustors, propulsor concepts, and the gas generator core, engine section containing the compressor, combustor, and turbine. The Vehicle Systems Integration, VSI, subproject focused on research into systems analysis, airframe propulsion integration, propulsion airframe aeroacoustics, and advanced vehicle concepts. A fourth subproject concerned overall management of the ERA project. The ERA project defined metrics for measuring technical progress at the technology, airframe and propulsion systems, vehicle, and fleet levels as aligned with the ARMS framework of managing the NASA aeronautics portfolio by technical challenges and their corresponding progress indicators or key performance parameters. Use of this concept of management by technical challenges enabled the ERA managers to provide context and a compelling case for why the project's technical content was needed, what they were trying to achieve, and how they intended to execute the technical plan. Managers defined specific technical challenges and identified key performance parameters for each to quantify progress in technology maturation by establishing performance targets, and by tracking progress as major testing campaigns were completed and system-level assessments conducted. In preparation for Phase 2, the ERA project mapped airframe, 
propulsion, and vehicle system integrity and research activities to five technical focus areas and evaluated the projected individual technology contribution of each.5 The Phase II Integrated Technology Demonstration, ITD, portfolio was consistent with ARM's principles of management by technical challenges.6 Phase II Technical Focus Areas and corresponding technical challenges are TFA1, Innovative Flow Control Concepts for Drag Reduction, TC1, Demonstrate Drag Reduction of 8%, contributing to the 50% fuel burn reduction goal at the aircraft system level, without significant penalties in weight, noise, or operational complexity. TFA-2, Advanced Composites for Weight Reduction, TC-2, Demonstrate Weight Reduction of 10% compared to Composites, contributing to the 50% fuel burn reduction goal at the aircraft system level, while enabling lower drag air frames and maintaining safety margins at the aircraft system level. TFA-3, Advanced UHB Engine Designs for Specific Fuel Consumption and Noise Reduction, TC3, Demonstrate UHB Efficiency Improvements to Achieve 15% Thrust Specific Fuel Consumption, TSFC, Reductian, Contributing to the 50% Fuel Burn Reduction Goal at the Aircraft System Level, While Reducing Engine System Noise and Minimizing Weight, Drag, NOx, and Integration Penalties at the Aircraft System Level. TFA4, Advanced Combustor Designs for Oxides of Nitrogen Reduction, TC4, demonstrate reductions of landing and takeoff NOx MS science by 75% relative to the stringent standards established at the International Civil Aviation Organizations, ICAO, Committee on Aviation Environmental Protection, 6th meeting, CEEP 6, held in Montreal, Canada, in 2004, and reduce cruise NOx by 70% while minimizing the impact on fuel burn at the aircraft system level, without penalties in stability and durability of the engine system. TFA5, Airframe and Engine Integration Concepts for Community Noise and Fuel Burn Reduction, TC5, Demonstrate Reduced Component Noise Signatures Leading to an Effective Perceived Noise in Decibels, IBB, Decrease by 42 IBB to Stage 4 Noise Margin for the Aircraft System While Minimizing Weight and Integration Penalties to Enable 50% Fuel Burn Reduction at the Aircraft System Level.7, ERA Project, Key Technical Focus Areas and Technical Challenges 1. Innovative Flow Control Concepts for Drag Reduction TC, Reduce Fuel Burn by 6% while Minimizing Maintenance Issues 2. Advanced Composites for Weight Reduction TC, Reduce Aircraft Weight by 10% over SOA Composites while Maintaining Safety Margins at the Aircraft System Level 3. Advanced UHB Engine Designs for Specific Fuel Consumption and Noise Reduction TC, Reduce Fuel Burn by 20% while Reducing Engine System Noise and while Minimizing Weight, Drag and Integration Penalties at AC System Level 4. Advanced Combustor Designs for Landing Takeoff Oxides of Nitrogen Reduction TC, Reduce L to NOx by minus 75% while reducing fuel burn by 50% of the aircraft system level 5. Airframe and Engine Integration Concepts for Community Noise Reduction TC, Reduce Component Noise Signatures while Minimizing Weight and Integration Penalties at Aircraft System Level to Achieve 42 IPV Margin to Stage 4 after selecting 5 Key Technical Focus Areas, ERA planners designated specific technical chawl lenses to drive progress forward. NASA, ERA formulation and planning in the formulation phase of the project, dubbed Phase 0, a planning team used prior research results and inputs from stakeholders across the aviation community, to develop an overarching plan along with an effective approach to achieve the project's goals. To begin, researchers considered how to best exploit some of the concepts and technologies already under investigation through NASA's SFW project. Each of these technologies was evaluated to determine its respective technology readiness level, TRL, a measurement used to assess maturity. NASA uses nine technology readiness level rating levels. The lowest is TRL-1, designated when scientific research is just beginning, and results are being translated into future research and development. This represents a transition from basic science to applied research and explores the essential characteristics of systems and architectures. A rating of TRL-2 is assessed once the basic principles have been studied and it is clear that initial findings have practical applications. Technology at the TRL-2 level is still considered very speculative, as there is as yet little or no experimental proof of concept for the technology. Once active research and design efforts begin, a technology may be elevated to TRL-3. This generally requires both analytical and laboratory studies to determine whether a technology is viable and ready to be advanced further through the development process. During TRL-3, researchers typically demonstrate technical feasibility using a simple proof-of-concept model. Next, the new technology is advanced to TRL-4. 
During this phase, multiple components or subsystems are integrated and tested in a laboratory environment. Research under TRL5 involves more rigorous testing and thorough validation under environmental conditions that are as realistic as possible. Once this has been completed, the technology is ready to advance to TRL6 in the form of a fully functional prototype or representational model. Engineering feasibility is demonstrated in a suitably relevant end-to-end environment, ground, air, or space. By the time the technology reaches TRL7, it is ready for a system prototyping demonstration in an operational environment. At this point, a working model or prototype should be at or near the scale of the proposed operational system, with most functions available for demonstration and testing. TRL-8 technology has been tested and flight qualified, and is ready for implementation. Finally, once a technology has been flight proven through successful operational experience, it can be elevated to TRL-9.8 NASA's Aeronautics Research Mission Directorate, ARMD, is tasked with advancing U.S. technological leadership in aeronautics through partnership with industry, academia, and other government agencies that conduct aeronautics-related research. This includes addressing the fundamental research needs of NextGen in partnership with member agencies of the NASA Joint Planning and Development Office. In 2008, members of the NASA Advisory Committee, NAC, called for ARM to plan and develop candidate systems-level research projects consistent with the agency's national policy and plan and to leverage NASA's unique expertise and competencies to advance state-of-the-art capabilities in key disciplines and facilitate transition of results to the aviation community.9 in support of this goal. NASA created the Integrated Systems Research Program, ISRP, to conduct research at an integrated system level on promising concepts and technologies and to explore, assess, and demonstrate the benefits in a relevant environment. All research in this program was coordinated with ongoing long-term, foundational research, as well as with efforts being undertaken by other government agencies such as the FAA. In order to meet the projected growth in demand for air transportation, The ISRP was designed to focus primarily on maturing and integrating major vehicle system and subsystem technologies for accelerated transition to practical application. However, the greatest foreseeable obstacles to increasing the number of flight operations at many of the nation's largest airports were environmental concerns over noise and emissions that would necessarily limit the growth capacity of those airports, and therefore limit the capacity of the entire air transport tie-in system. Based on these parameters, the U.S. National Research Council, NRC, Congress, the Executive Office of the President, and the NEC issued several mandates, directives, and recommendations to NASA. Some of these cited the need for NASA to develop a green aircraft initiative and to advance the development of technologies and operational procedures to decrease the significant environmental impacts from aviation.10 This set the stage for creating the ERA project. About two weeks after the 2008 presidential election, Armed Associate Administrator Dr. Haiwan Shin called SFW Project Scientist Dr. Richard A. Walls at Langley Research Center, La RC, to discuss preliminary plans for a two-pronged project to advance an environmentally responsible approach to aircraft design and operations. One team would focus on a segment, dubbed ERA Vehicle, ERAV, that would explore and assess new aircraft design concepts and enabling technologies through system-level experimentation to simultaneously reduce total fuel burn, carbon emissions, and airport area noise. The other, ERA operations, ERAO, would investigate air traffic control system technologies that could significantly improve safety, capacity, and efficiency on runways and in the nation's skies, as envisioned under NextGen, while simultaneously providing environmentally friendly procedures for reducing fuel burn, emissions, and noise.11 ultimately, the ERAV planning activity became the first and only project in the new ISRP while selected activities from the ERAO planning team were integrated into a revamped airspace systems program.12 Walls was assigned to serve as activity planning lead for the FAP, reporting directly to the FAP director, Dr. A.J. Misra. He pulled together approximately 30 people in multiple disciplines from all four of the NASA Aeronautics Centers to formulate the overall ERA concept. With a new administration coming into the White House, this challenge was particularly daunting. At that time, he recalled, NASA was dealing with the presidential transition team and trying to figure out what the budget would be and whether ERA would even make it into the new NASA budget. 13 only a handful of people within NASA were initially aware of what was being planned. Information regarding the fledgling ERA project was otherwise embargoed from being disclosed to industry or media representatives. We weren't allowed to talk about it because it was still in the budgeting process, said Walls. Basically, from November 2008 through May 2009, 
there were people inside NASA that knew that there was planning going on, but nobody outside knew what was going on. 14 Eventually, the effort grew to the point where so many people were involved that others began to suspect what was afoot. We were using all the knowledge of all the partnerships we already had, and of all the technologies that were available at the time, to formulate a construct that we were pretty sure people would buy into, and they did, Walls remembered, it was a pretty interesting time. 15 Planning Guidance According to official planning guidance, as of November 2008, armed leadership still envisioned two distinct system-level activities, the ERAV and ERAO efforts, which would be distinct yet coupled. From a technical approach perspective, development of a multifunctional testbed vehicle would serve as a centralized airborne test facility for systems integration research. The proposed experimental vehicle testbed, or XVT, was expected to provide significant collaborative opportunities between the ERAV and ERAO activities. It soon became apparent, however, that the anticipated ERA budget would not support acquisition of an XVT. Nevertheless, the idea endured. Early ERA-related studies included analysis to inform project leaders as to the potential scope, cost, and benefits to be derived from such an asset, thereby providing a basis for future decisions.16 Throughout the initial formulation, the technical scope of ERA remained focused primarily on N plus 2 concepts at technologies at the airframe, propulsion, and vehicle systems level. From a schedule perspective, planners held to a nominal six-year timeframe with definitive start and endpoints. The ERA project notionally had two three-year phases, with phase one setting the stage for phase two. Originally, the second phase emphasized construction and utilization of the multifunctional airborne testbed for research and development. Without the XVT, the two-phase approach remained but with some necessary adjustments and overlap.17 from a budget perspective, the original ERA planning guidance covered six years beginning in Phi 2009 and totaling $451.2 million. This included $215.6 million for design and fabrication of the XVT and associated ERA experiments. Original estimates were based on an annual budget ranging from $35 million in Phi 2009 to a peak of $133 million in Phi 2013. However, based on the President's Phi 2010 budget, the ERA project had a much flatter level in the $60 to $65 million range, and totaling at about $318.80 over five years.18 According to Richard Walls, the overall shape and structure of ERA depended entirely on the availability of funding. To put it in context, he explained, back in the 1990s with the advanced subsonic technology and high-speed research programs, the NASA aeronautics budget was up in the low billion-dollar range, and when those projects ended, the budget started a steady decrease through the late 1990s until it was only at the $450 million level. 19 Walls noted that prior to 2007, there had not been a sustained increase in the NASA aeronautics budget in roughly 10 years. Around that time, Congress added about $30 to $40 million, but the additional money was of the sort that had to be spent within the fiscal year for which it was allocated, making it nearly impossible to develop a long-range plan. So, when President Obama's five-year budget was announced, aeronautics was increased to something like $510 million, and that was the first sustained increase in NASA aeronautics in over a decade. 20 meeting of experts after the president's new budget became public, ERA planners arranged for a meeting of experts from the Aeronautics and Space Engineering Board, ASEB, National Research Council, NRC, to gather feedback on the project's technical feasibility. Elon Crew, a distinguished professor of aeronautics and astronautics at Stanford University and a member of the NAC Aeronautics Committee, chaired the two-day meeting, which began on May 14, 2009, in National Harbor, Maryland. This event was open to the general public. Dr. Haiwan Shin led off with an overview of armed plans and goals for system-level research and environmental impact mitigation. John A. Kowalowski, Acting Director of the Airspace Systems Program, ASP, and NextGen, Integration Manager Barry Sullivan gave presentations on technologies for next-gen systems analysis, integration, and evaluation. Anthony Strazier, Acting Director of FAP, presented a broad overview of the proposed ERA project followed by a much more in-depth technical description by Walls. The ERA planning team lead later described the pressure he felt as he prepared to make his presentation. The night before, I remember cramming for my two-hour presentation like it was my PhD dissertation, he recalled. There was so much writing on it, and if those experts had said, you were way off base, this is garbage, ERA would probably not have happened. 21 Wall's presentation, entitled Environmentally Responsible Aviation Technical Overview, represented not only his own viewpoint, 
but the contributions of a multi-center ERA planning team including Dr. Fayette S. Fay Collier Jr., Dr. Ruben Del Rosario, Dennis Huff, Lawrence Larry Levitt, Patrick Pat Stoliker, and Anthony Tony Strazier. So incisive was this survey, and so positive was its reception, that it served as the foundational document underpinning the entire ERA effort and, for that reason, is included as Appendix 1 of this work. The following morning was devoted to breakout sessions, discussions between presenters and experts, and comments from general public attendees. According to Walls, there was a great deal of useful feedback that coupled with budgetary allocations helped drive the final planning stages. Early on, there had been some discussion of building a large-scale experimental demonstrator aircraft, or X-plane. Such an endeavor would have added to the complexity, and therefore the overall cost, of the ERA project. Unfortunately, funding on that scale was not available, so planners opted to focus on a number of critical technologies in the first phase of the project, and then select the most promising ones for more detailed study in the second phase. As Walls put it, we were looking into whether we could do an X-plane, and then the projected budget went down and ERA ended up becoming a phase 1 portfolio of a number of activities, and then a down select to a phase 2 that focused on certain technologies. 22 phase 1 focused on studies involving stitched composite technology for weight reduction and damage tolerance, laminar flow technology for drag reduction, flight dynamics and control technology for enabling alternate aircraft configurations, engine combustor technology for low emissions, propulsion technology and integration for improved specific fuel consumption, SFC, and noise reduction, and propulsion shielding for noise reduction. These concepts and technologies would be explored and assessed with respect to feasibility, potential benefits, interdependencies, and risks. Researchers were tasked to refine existing concepts and develop new ideas, and to uncover unexpected multidisciplinary interactions. Based on the results, they would then prioritize the various technologies for further study. Phase 1 results, system studies, and stakeholder input would determine which technologies were most promising or best suited to meeting ERA project goals. Eight of these were eventually selected for more detailed exploration as Phase 2 integrated technology demonstrations, which began in FI 2013 and continued throughout the remainder of the ERA project. 23 having secured validation of the basic ERA concept, it was time to formalize the project's organization and structure. Management personnel were drawn from the SFW project through which a variety of advanced aircraft concepts including a hybrid wing body, truss braced wings, and others was already being investigated. Dr. Faye Collier was SFW principal investigator and Dr. Ruben Del Rosario served as project manager. As project scientist, Walls primarily acted as a senior technical advisor. I'm pretty sure that Faye kind of endorsed me to peel away from SFW to lead the planning for ERA, he said. 24 Collier assumed leadership of the ERA effort immediately following complete tie-in of the meeting of experts. His team formulated detailed project life cycle events to be executed over the remainder of FI 2009 and Collier conducted major planning reviews with NASA senior leadership. These included an acquisition strategy meeting with Associate Administrator Christopher J. Scalise in August 2009 and a baseline review the following month, during which Dr. Shin granted the authority to proceed with Phase 1 starting October 1. At that point, Anthony E. Tony Washburn became chief technologist for ERA and Walls went back to serving full-time as chief technical advisor and strategist for SFW. It was a real hard decision for me because in my heart and soul I had been in all the ERA planning, but I was equally invested in SFW, said Walls. I decided to go the SFW route because I felt that I could better complement Ruben. 26 As the structure of the new project also began to come into focus, Budget realities affected plans to include air traffic management operations research as part of ERA along with the vehicle-related efforts. According to Walls, their budget was always going to be a little bit lower than ours, and around about the middle of April 2009 we were told that we didn't have enough money to do both of those things. So, while ERA went on to focus on vehicle technologies, the ASP effort spun off on its own using SFW funds. So, there was this dynamic of one project that was kind of losing money, but the money for subsonic vehicles was going up because ERA was bigger than what was being pulled out of the subsonic fixed-wing project, so it was a win all the way around, Walls explained. Around that time, Congress passed the American 25. Walls Interview. 26. EVID, Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009. It was a stimulus package that came right in the middle of February when we were planning everything, and we were looking into how that might feed into, ERA, said Walls. It was a different color of money, and there were certain amounts that could be applied to get things started. 
27 Walls noted that of all the many challenges the ERA faced at its onset, the most significant, and ultimately the most significant early accomplishment, was securing funds for the project and the President's budget submission and winning the approval of the panel of experts. Additionally, the unusually rigid two-phase project structure with set starting and ending points was a real test for NASA. As Walls explained, from the beginning, how one had said that this was not going to be an enduring project, we were going to start it and, stop it, and, show that we can complete a project and hold a schedule. Normally, he added, the project managers would designate a specific set of milestones spanning five or six years, and that would constitute the project plan. But we made the case that we wanted to have this decision point, at the end of phase one, and then down-select technologies for phase two, he said. That was a whole programmatic challenge in itself that kind of set the stage for some of the other projects that followed. From there, a lot of what happened in phase one was involved with technologies that were ready to graduate to higher technology readiness levels. So we picked a suite of things that we thought were ready, and that's how the first phase of ERA started. 28. ERA Phase 1, Phi 2010 Phi 2012. Phase 1 spanned the first three years of implementation and served two primary purposes. First, during this phase, a significant NASA research announcement, NRA, was defined with the primary purpose to conduct N plus 2 vehicle system studies, develop enabling technology roadmaps, and scope key enabling system level experiments ranging from those focused on integrated airframe systems and integrated propulsion systems to the development of appropriate experimental vehicle testbed, or explained, concepts. The scope of Phase 1 included trades on technology suites, scale, cost and schedule. This NRA also enabled solicitation of ready-to-go, system-level experiments that could be initiated in short order. Second, several promising technology solutions were matured from armed foundational projects. In general, these larger-scale experiments were selected from the existing armed technology portfolio because they provided both a significant system benefit and were already at a TRL level that warranted conducting a large-scale demonstration to validate the technology.29 One of the most promising concepts for simultaneously meeting all of the subsonic transport system-level metrics was the hybrid wing body, HWB, configuration, also known as the blended wing body, BWB. Proving the viability of the HWB concept was at the forefront of the ERA project and was dependent on two long pole items. First was the requirement to demonstrate low speed flight controls and handling characteristics. Second was success full demonstration of an advanced composite manufacturing technique called pultruded rod stitched unitized structure, Perseus. Additionally, researchers hypothesized that the HWB would be the best configuration for achieving the very difficult goal of simultaneously meeting fuel burn and noise goals. The emergence of advanced open rotor propulsion systems promised increased propulsive efficiency and reduced noise. Research ultimately demonstrated that combining the HWB airframe with open rotor propulsion came very close to meeting all ERA goals. During Phase 1, engineers and scientists assessed dozens of environmentally friendly aircraft technologies. These included advanced vehicle design studies, open rotor technology for reduced engine noise, Non-stick coatings for low-drag wing designs intended to achieve drag reduction via laminar flow. Testing advanced fabric composite manufacturing techniques. Reducing mission fuel burn and community noise, including airframe noise and propulsion noise from the fan, core, and jet of gas turbine engines, and minimizing propulsion airframe aeroacoustics via tailored airframe propulsion integrated design and shielding. Integration of advanced engines, cowlings, nacelles, and pylons for zero installation drag. Advanced Engine Combustor Development, Ultra Quiet HWB Wind Tunnel Demonstrations and Systems Analysis, and Test Flights of a Subscale Remotely Piloted HWB Research Vehicle. Many of these concepts showed great potential for reducing aircraft noise and carbon footprints. By the end of Phase 1, ERA project teams were ready to take the valuable lessons learned over the first three years and begin implementing the most promising technologies during Phase 2. Key enablers for beginning Phase 1 included stable funding coupled with a number of promising concepts and technologies that had strong potential for further system-level maturation. With the endorsement of the panel of experts, the NAC called upon armed leadership to plan and develop a number of candidate research projects consistent with the National Aeronautics Policy and Plan and leverage NASA's unique expertise and competencies. The primary goal was to advance state-of-the-art capabilities in several key disciplines and facilitate transition of results to the aerospace community. At the time when ERA was formulated, there was strong support from industry for new system-level research for improving aircraft efficiency.30 Advancing the state-of-the-art The ERA Phase 1 research portfolio focused on exploring, 
assessing, and demonstrating the benefits of promising concepts and technologies, and expanding upon previous work. Phase 1 efforts took full advantage of previous groundwork laid at the foundational research level and moved it from a TRL of at least 4 or 5, component and or breadboard validation in a laboratory or relevant environment, respectively, to a desired TRL of at least 6, system prototype demonstration in an operational environment. The ERA planning team began by identifying technologies already investigated in armed programs that had the potential to reduce subsonic transport emissions, fuel burn and noise, yet met the minimum TRL requirements. 31 technologies under consideration had to meet several criteria in order to be selected for research. First, a candidate technology had to have attained sufficient maturity in the foundational research program that it merited more in-depth evaluation at an integrated system level. Second, systems analysis had to indicate that the technology in question had the maximum potential for contributing to the simultaneous attainment of all ERA technical goals. Finally, any research had to be appropriate for NASA to conduct and could not duplicate that being done by other government agencies.32 for the most part, ERA efforts focused on the N plus 2 technologies that had the potential to mature to a TRL level of 4 to 6 by 2020. By August 2010, researchers had assembled an ERA N plus 2 technology database analysis examine in the interaction of 65 different technologies, including 19 related to airframe design and manufacturing processes, and 46 related to engine performance. According to Craig Nickel, ERA Vehicle Systems Integration Element Lead, Researchers took into account current and projected TRLs and studied the interactions of various technologies using a compatibility matrix. Analysts then estimated projected benefits and impacts on fuel burn, noise, and science using models developed with NASA's Aircraft Noise Prediction Program, ANOP, Flight Optimization and Performance Sizing, FLOPS, Tool, and Numerical Propulsion Simulation System slash Weight Analysis of Turbine Engines, NPSS slash Weight Modeling Programs. Under contract to NASA, researchers at Georgia Institute of Technology integrated this software toolset into their own computer-based environmental design space, EDS, tool to make deterministic and probabilistic assessments of the ERA technology package most likely to result in the best overall performance.33 For baseline purposes, researchers used the Boeing 777 as an ideal example of an advanced, long-range, large twin-aisle, LTA, two-and-wing, TAW, airliner configuration. The optimal technology package for this class of aircraft included a combination of 14 new airframe technologies and 25 engine technologies. Many of these came directly from the Phase 1 portfolio. Among the new airframe advances were stitched composite materials, laminar flow control, LFC airfoils and nacelles, active flow control rudder, continuous mold line, CML, link flaps, and aerodynamic landing gear fairings. New engine technologies included active compressor slash turbine flow control, active film cooling, highly loaded compressor slash turbine systems, ceramic matrix composites, CMC, metal foam liners and engine vanes, and advanced combustors. Analysts also studied noise and fuel burn trade-offs and compared optimized performance points to goals established in the ERA project plan.34 individually, each of these goals presented a significant challenge. Because armed leadership had decreed that all goals be met simultaneously it was much more difficult to make trade-offs or compromises with regard to each parameter. The bar had been set intentionally high because NASA analysts determined that without major improvements, environmental and related cost concerns would significantly impede the growth of future civil and military air transport operations. Rising oil prices alone dictated a necessity for improving fuel economy. In 2008, when aviation fuel cost approximately $3 per gallon, U.S. commercial carriers alone spent $59 billion. At the same time, there was an increasing focus on the environmental effects of aircraft exhaust emissions. Annual fuel consumption for Defense Department purposes was roughly 4.6 billion gallons, pumping as much as 250 million tons of carbon dioxide, CO2, into the atmosphere. Additionally, population growth in areas surrounding existing airports and increased demand for air transportation heralded the need to reduce aircraft noise, which would also act as a restraining factor on growth of the National Airspace System, NAS. 35. The ERA initiative was well-timed to leverage these environmental and economic concerns and accelerate new commercial engine and airframe developments. Project researchers anticipated that new technologies would yield a high payoff for a multitude of commonly used commercial platforms such as the Boeing 737 and 777 series, Airbus A320, and the Canadair Regional Jet, CRJ, family of aircraft. Moreover, 
the ERA technology portfolio would have a significant impact on the wide-body replacement market regardless of whether new aircraft were designed using conventional tube and wing or more advanced configurations. A year into Phase 1, Project Manager Faye Collier expressed confidence in meeting the expected challenges. People are asking how we are going to do this, he said. We've done some experiments that lead us to believe that although this is difficult, we think it is achievable. 36 Phase 1 Research Portfolio The ERA Project's Phase 1 technology investigations were approved for implementation at the first key decision point, known as the KDP-1 Formulation Review. At this time, the Phase 1 Research Portfolio was organized and managed around the three major technical subprojects, airframe technology, propulsion technology, and vehicle systems integration. The technology portfolio within each subproject was divided into the following research elements. Airframe Technology Subproject, lightweight integrated structures element, flight dynamics and control element, drag reduction element, noise reduction element, propulsion technology subproject, combustor technology element, propulsor technology element, core technology element, vehicle systems integration subproject, systems analysis element, propulsion airframe integration element, propulsion airframe aeroacoustics element, Advanced Vehicle Concepts Element Airframe Technology Subproject The Airframe Technology Subproject was designed to conduct system-level experiments on airframe technologies, particularly with a view toward addressing the fuel burn and noise reduction goals. The Phase 1 Airframe Technology Portfolio was built upon technologies that would take full advantage of Previo's groundwork laid at the foundational research level, and in Phase 1 move from a TRL of 3, in most cases, to at least a TRL of 4, Component and or breadboard validation in a laboratory. 37 planners selected numerous key airframe technologies for Phase 1 investigations based on projected vehicle level benefits. The following technologies were of paramount interest lightweight integrated structures, Perseus composite technology system that includes stitching middle. Dot middle. Dot resin infusion middle. Dot unitized structures middle. Dot damage tolerant structures middle. Dot post buckled structures, flight dynamics and control. Stability and control characteristics of low noise HWB vehicle configurations, drag reduction, active flow control rudder, natural laminar flow ground test capability, hybrid laminar flow control via discrete roughness elements, adaptive compliant trailing edge, ACTE, flaps, noise reduction, flap edge and landing gear fairings, noise reduction concepts, lightweight integrated structures element. The lightweight integrated structures investigation focused on a new structural concept called Perseus. This lightweight, damage-tolerant, stitched composite system offered benefits with regard to manufacturing a wide variety of aircraft components from wings to cargo doors, but primarily served as an enabling technology for non-circular pressurized fuselage assemblies. Aircraft designers considered the ability to build a non-circular pressurized fuselage as key to enable vehicle concepts with a reduced overall wetted area, surface area and direct contact with external airflow. Reductions in wetted area directly address the fuel burn goal through reduced overall skin friction drag. The Perseus concept introduced both new materials and manufacturing processing methods in a structural concept with high potential for both weight reduction, 10.3% compared to advanced composite sandwich structures analytically applied to a non-circular center body shell, and manufacturing cost savings, based on experience with a similar but non-primary structural application. However, to be a viable approach, these new materials and processes needed to be validated. In Phase 1, researchers adopted a building block approach to analysis and testing, from coupons to structural elements and subcomponents. These efforts culminated during Phase 2 in full-scale Perseus testing involving a full test matrix of specimens with large cutouts, impact damage, and discrete source damage subjected to representative loadings. Data requirements included information on repair methodology, material durability, combined load conditions, and long-term structural performance, as well as safety margins, design methodology, inspection techniques, and understanding of load paths. Additionally in Phase 1, researchers investigated Perseus acoustic transmiss cyan characteristics to determine cabin noise impacts. Investigators also identified structural design strategies for minimizing the coupling of cabin and engine noise. 38 flight dynamics and control element during Phase 1, NASA, Boeing and the Air Force Research Laboratory, AFRL, collaborated on flight testing an 8.5% scale, remotely piloted aircraft of a potential, full-scale HWB-type aircraft called the X-48. The plane was equipped with a computerized fly-by-wire system and flown remotely from a ground control station. Flight testing consisted of a multi-step research program aimed at ascertaining the low-speed handling and flying qualities of this type of aircraft. 
researchers experimented with two leading edge configurations, with wing slats either extended or retracted. Flying with the slats extended allowed the plane to fly slower with greater lift, representative of takeoff and landing conditions. The high speed, slats retracted, configuration represented the aircraft in cruise mode. Additionally, two different stabilizer and engine arrangements were evaluated. 39 designed by Boeing and built by Cranfield Aerospace. The initial X 48B configuration was flown in partnership with NASA at Armstrong Flight Research Center, AFRC, beginning in July 2007. The aircraft weighed about 500 pounds and spanned just over 20 feet. Initially powered by three 52 pound thrust jet Cat P 200 turbojets, the demonstrator was capable of a top speed of 140 miles per hour and a maximum altitude of around 10,000 feet. Flight testing through the summer of 2010 focused on defining the low speed, low altitude flight characteristics of the HWB configuration, including engine out control, stall characteristics, and handling qualities. Following its 90 second flight, the aircraft underwent extensive modification to the X 48C configuration. External changes entailed relocating wingtip winglets inboard next to the engines, effectively turning them into a widely spaced twin V tail. The three noisy turbojets were replaced with two quieter 89 pound thrust jet cat SPT 15 ducted fan engines. The center body's aft deck was extended approximately 2 feet and the engines positioned between the tails to provide further sound baffling. The X-48C configuration, more highly refined than the V configuration, repeated many of the same test points as the previous X-48B. The major differences between the two configurations were optimized to reduce the predicted noise footprint at full scale. Flight data were obtained on both configurations at the same flight conditions to determine which one provided better low speed high angle of attack handling characteristics.40 drag reduction element for conventional commercial aircraft, the two main contributors to overall drag are skin friction drag and lift-induced drag. In ERA Phase 1, researchers focused on technologies related to the reduction of the overall viscous drag, specifically to reductions in wetted area or skin friction. Viscous drag contributes on the order of 50% of the total drag for a typical transonic transport vehicle and is highly dependent on the wetted area of the aircraft the boundary layer state, and flight conditions. In particular, for a given wetted area, a turbulent boundary layer causes significantly more skin friction drag than does a laminar boundary layer. Laminar flow is one of the key aerodynamic technologies with the potential to provide large reductions in fuel burn, roughly 5-15%, to depending on configuration. To achieve significant total projected fuel burn reductions on the order of 40% required by the N plus 2 goals, researchers' projections indicated that laminar flow needed to be obtained over 60% of the cord on the upper wing surface, simultaneously with 50% of the cord on the lower wing surface. 41 From an aerodynamic perspective, multiple approaches to achieve laminar flow are available. In Phase 1, the ERA project focused, in part, on validating the NASA La RC National Transonic Facility, NTF, as a viable ground test facility for natural laminar flow, NLF, testing. Researchers also investigated the possibility of achieving hybrid laminar flow control by applying discrete roughness elements, DREs, small micro bumps spaced at specific intervals along a swept leading edge of an airfoil. The DRE investigation in Phase 1 enabled a better understanding of the application of DREs at moderate Reynolds numbers, the ratio of inertial forces to viscous forces within a fluid which is subjected to relative internal movement due to different fluid velocities, and assess their feasibility at higher cord Reynolds numbers typical of large subsonic transports. Some Phase 1 research was devoted to the study of engineered airfoil surfaces. For example, because resistance to insect impacts is important to establishing and maintaining laminar flow, researchers identified and tested low-energy surface coatings for composite wings that might make manufacturing tolerances considerably lower in the leading-edge area. Another approach to reduce viscous cruise drag was to reduce the wetted area due to improved aerodynamic efficiency through the use of active flow control. This technique enables more aggressive surface performance though the use of low-energy interactions in the boundary layer for the purpose of gust load alleviation, buffet control, and high lift enhancement. At the time, the concept of using active separation control to increase rudder-slash-aileron effectiveness for the pure pose of reducing the size of control surfaces was ready to be pursued at the system level for technology integration. Phase 1 wind tunnel investigations applied active separation control to the rudder and vertical tail for the purpose of reducing the tail surface area required during a hypothetical engine-out contingency landing. Preliminary system analysis indicated a cruise drag reduction benefit of 1-2% through the application of this technology on the vertical tail alone. Additionally, 
At the start of Phase 1, NASA and the AFRL formed a partnership to conduct a bolt-on-oct flight experiment using a modified Gulfstream G3 aircraft. Both the DRE and OCT flight experiments were classified as potential ITD candidates for Phase 2.42 noise reduction element during landing. Propulsion noise is typically reduced because engine power is cut back significantly. As a result, the airframe contribution to community, airport environment, noise from conventional aircraft systems and configurations is approximately equal to that of the engines. ERA researchers expected N plus 2 vehicle configurations would employ engine noise shielding to further reduce community noise, along with quieter high bypass ratio engines. Therefore, the primary source of noise during future landings would result from airframe-related elements, specifically the landing gear and flap edges. Researchers considered using both aerodynamic fairings to mitigate landing gear noise, and CML technology to eliminate gaps between flaps, ailerons, and wings. Testing of CML concepts revealed some structural weaknesses requiring further study of new structural concepts. This pushed Phase 1 research to focus on the development of noise reduction fairings for airframe-related elements. This included wind tunnel testing of a semi-span scale model of a G550 Busi Nest jet baseline configuration without noise reduction fairings. Resulting data were used to validate aerodynamic performance models and baseline flight test data to determine scaling effects for Phase 2 test results. As part of Phase 2, researchers plan to use aeroacoustic wind tunnel data to determine the most promising noise reduction concepts to be integrated onto the main landing gear and flap edges of a full-scale Gulfstream G550 and conduct a series of flight tests. 43 propulsion technology subproject All three of ERA's N plus 2 goals were addressed in Phase 1 investigations within the propulsion technology subproject. Advanced combustor designs focused on NOx reduction and required a different approach than what was used to meet NASA subsonic transport system level metrics for N plus 1. The ERA noise reduction goal required new propulsor configurations, including engine noise shielding and an advanced propulsor. Fuel burn reduction goals required a higher bypass ratio propulsion system to improve propulsive efficiency. Investigations also addressed highly loaded front block compressor designs to enable higher thermal efficiency.44 in phase 1. The propulsion technology subproject addressed the following propulsion technologies. Combustor technology element, advanced combustor concepts, active combustion control, lightweight CMC liners, propulsor technology element, open rotor, UHP turbofan with noise reduction technologies including, soft vein middle dot lip liner middle dot over the rotor metal foam liner middle dot middle dot zero splice inlet, shape memory alloy variable area nozzle, core technology element high temperature erosion coatings for CMC vanes and exhaust nozzles, high operating pressure ratio, OPR, compressor slash turbine combustor technology element as part of phase one, researchers sought to achieve landing and takeoff NOx reduction goals by maturing several new combustor concepts in partnership with engine manufacturers and fuel injector companies. Their strategy, aimed toward improving injector designs and developing innovative concepts to improve fuel slash air mixing into the combustor. This was accomplished in combination with higher temperature materials that required less cooling air, namely coated CMC, along with fuel flexibility and improved fuel injector timed modulation control. Researchers considered designs for conventional and alternative fuels. Alternative fuels with higher thermal stability allowed for improved injector designs without choking concerns. As part of Phase 1, advanced combustor concepts were developed and screened through flame tube tests, matured to TRL4, and sector tests, matured to TRL5. Industry cost shared the flame tube and sector tests with NASA. Advanced combustor testing was conducted using the Advanced Subsonic Combustion Rig, ASCR, facility and advanced fuel flexible injectors were tested at the CE5 facility, both located at the NASA Glenn Research Center, GRC. Additional testing took place in industry test facilities. A promising advanced combustor concept was selected for further engine development as part of Phase 2.45 Propulsor Technology Element Propulsive Efficiency has a significant impact on an aircraft's SFC, and increasing the bypass ratio of a turbofan engine provides benefits for both fuel burn reduction and noise reduction. The ability to increase bypass ratio is limited by engine size, weight, aerodynamic drag and installation issues. ERA researchers considered several advanced propulsion systems for future aircraft having higher bypass ratios, including open rotor systems and UHB geared turbofans. For N plus 2 vehicle concepts, the integration of these propulsion systems was a key technical issue addressed by the ERA project. Researchers investigated near-term and far-term advanced propulsor configurations in Phase 1. 
Near-term investigations focused on wind tunnel testing of the best available propulsor systems, both open rotor and UHB turbofans, that offered the desired performance and acoustic characteristics. Through high-fidelity model scale experiments, Phase 1 Propulsor Technology Investigations assess system level performance and acoustics. The results were critical for anchoring system studies and identifying appropriate propulsion slash airframe configurations that warranted further study in Phase 2.46 testing of a low noise, open rotor system, initiated under the SFW project, was completed during FI 2010 in the 9 by 15 foot and 8 by 6 foot wind tunnels at GRC for acoustic and aerodynamic performance. The open rotor propulsor was tested both at isolation and with simulated installed effects. For candidate N plus 2 vehicle concepts. Candidate technologies tested for lower noise included increased rotor spacing, lower blade count, lower tip speed rotors with larger diameters, clipped aft rotors, and optimized spanwise rotor loading. Researchers used particle image velocimetry, pressure-sensitive paint, and phased array data to develop a complete validation dataset for open rotor aerodynamic and acoustic code assessment and development. This investigation explored the design space for lower noise while maintaining the high propulsive efficiency provided by a counter-rotating open rotor system. As with the open rotor configuration, subscale UHB turbofan models were tested in the GRC wind tunnels in both isolation and with simulated installed effects in late FI 2011 and early FI 2012. These tests provided the opportunity to investigate the impact of increasing the bypass ratio to approximately 15 to 18. Additionally, a test for a distortion-tolerant, integrated inlet fan instigated cruise performance impacts and helped establish a database for code development. Researchers studied installation effects such as pylon, fuselage, and wing integration along with features that minimized interaction noise sources. Technologies investigated included shape memory alloy variable area nozzles, acoustically treated, soft, stator vanes, over-the-rotor acoustic treatment, low distortion short inlets, active stall control integrated with a variable area nozzle, and a distortion-tolerant fan design.47 core technology element the thermal efficiency of the engine core that provides power to the propulsor is an important parameter for fuel consumption. Researchers found that although there is a perception that the optimum thermal efficiency has almost been reached for gas turbine engine core components, there are still opportunities for optimizing the system for fuel burn reduction by increasing the turbine inlet temperatures and increasing the overall pressure ratio of the compression system. In Phase 1, several advanced technologies were selected for maturation that promised benefits in the near term to virtually any core engine system. ERA researchers performed low-level exploratory work with CMC materials and structures and investigated an advanced highly loaded front block compressor concept. They concluded that CMC materials are ready for application in the N plus 2 timeframe for engine components such as turbine vanes and core exhaust nozzles. The greatest advantage of CMCs over existing materials is that their lightweight structures can withstand very high temperatures. For the ERA project, Researchers investigated the properties of both turbine vanes and panels for core nozzles made from CMC capable of withstanding 2400F. Testing proved, these materials highly effective as a practical cooling strategy for ceramic turbine vanes. Studies involving turbine vane design, fabrication, and testing explored materials and structures, coatings, ceramics durability, and heat transfer char actorization at realistic engine temperatures. Two different fabrication techniques were pursued by the end of FI 2010 that led to a verification of the manufacturability of CMC turbine vanes and coatings. CMC nozzles were developed and demonstrated using lightweight slash high temperature static structures to reduce weight of the nacelle slash exhaust stream. Researchers concluded that high temperature ceramic composites with integral acoustic treatments could save considerable weight while reducing noise simultaneously. During phase one, a CMC exhaust nozzle was designed and representative panels were fabricated for coupon durability assessments in FI 2010. In FI 2011, key subcomponents were built to verify fabrication methods. Additionally, NASA established a partnership with industry to test key nozzle subcomponents in FI 2012.48 generally, an engine with a high number of low-pressure turbine stages tends to be long and heavy. For an N plus 2 power plant, it was considered desirable to keep the engine as short and light as possible. In Phase 1, NASA researchers and designers from General Electric, GE, worked together to develop a highly loaded, high aerodynamic efficiency design that used steady blowing in the exit guide vanes to enable more rear stage loading and fewer stages for the same work. Designers employed three-dimensional optimization in the design for the first time, which resulted in improved non-axisymmetric contouring of the hub and wall, ultimately contributing to higher efficiency. 
The advanced compressor was fabricated at GE and the first stage configuration of the compressor was tested in the GRC W7 facility to verify the design. Phase 1 investigations validated this design approach and were subsequently implemented in testing of an advanced compressor during Phase 2.49 Vehicle Systems Integration Subproject. The Vehicle Systems Integration Subproject combined airframe technologies and propulsion technologies into larger subsystems, multi component, and vehicle experiments to address progress towards the simultaneous achievement of N2 subsonic transport system level metrics with regard to emissions, fuel burn, and noise reductions. For Phase 1, this subproject also included multidisciplinary systems analysis activities. In Phase 1, the focus of the four elements of the VSI subproject included systems analysis element, individual technology maturation assessment against ERA N plus 2 metrics, vehicle level assessment of the ERA technology suite against ERA N plus 2 metrics, fleet level assessment on the technology insertion timeframe for all vehicle classes across N plus 1. N plus 2 and N plus 3 aircraft and propulsion science system generations, airframe and propulsion system integration studies on the most promising technologies based on predicted performance against ERA N plus 2 metrics, propulsion airframe integration, PAI, element, subscale, high speed UHB turbine powered simulator PI test on an advanced tube and wing vehicle concept in cruise configuration, propulsion airframe aeroacoustic, PAA, element, subscale, low speed, open rotor pod testing of HWB vehicle configuration, subscale, low speed, UHB turbine powered simulator pod testing of HWB vehicle configuration, advanced vehicle concepts element, over the wing nacelle vehicle configuration study, N plus two advanced vehicle concept study systems analysis element at formulation, a suite of potential ERA project technologies and concepts were identified and assessed utilizing an analysis of alternatives approach. Researchers conducted a broad survey of technologies with the goal of identifying technologies with a potential to reach TRL 46 in the 2015 timeframe. Additionally, these technologies provided positive system level benefits toward simultaneously meeting the N2 noise, emissions, and fuel burn goals. Unconventional air vehicle concepts and configurations were also included as part of the technology survey. Subsystem technologies were then integrated onto advanced vehicle configurations to assess system level benefits. This initial assessment informed the development of the ERA Phase 1 investigations.50 Phase 1 airframe and propulsion technology performance results from subsystem and component testing were extrapolated, when feasible, to estimate full scale, integrated performance at the airframe system, propulsion system, vehicle, and fleet level against N2 subsonic transport system metrics for emissions, fuel burn and noise reduction. At the end of phase one, a common set of metrics was established and validated across the airframe, propulsion, and vehicle Integra tie-in research areas of the ERA project. Academic, industry, and NASA results were used to validate the analysis of alternatives approach. Research teams also conducted sensitivity analysis for critical technology elements. Researchers produced semi-annual updates and annual reports to communicate the assessment status and findings to ERA project leaders, the ISRP program, and ARMED. These technology and concept integration assessments supported the formulation of the Phase 2 investigation presented at the KDP2 review at the end of FI 2012. The systems analysis slash integration function continued into Phase 2. Results were reported directly to the ERA project management leadership team, a multi-center NASA, academic, and industry team that served as an honest broker whenever it became necessary to set priorities. 51 Propulsion Airframe Integration Element Aircraft engines are the single most significant contributor to aircraft community noise. Prior to the ERA project, virtually all large-scale installed engine-slash-airframe performance information came from conventional tube and wing configurations with engine pods hanging below the wings. Alternate configurations, such as the HWB with top-mounted engines, high wing tube and wing concepts with conventional nacelle installations, as on military transports, for example, and low wing tube and wing concepts having over wing mounted nacelles, provide shielding benefits that offer tremendous potential to reduce community noise. Phase 1 research focused on understanding PI challenges associated with integration of a UHB engine on a transonic transport configuration with some form of acoustic shielding installed. This investigation involved the optimize a tie-in of multiple concepts with a candidate UHB engine design, and included the simultaneous design of wing airfoil shapes, pylons, and the cell configurations. A semi-span high-speed wind tunnel model was designed from outer mold line shapes developed during the design process. 
Researchers then modified an existing turbine power simulation with an advanced fan and stator design simulating an engine bypass ratio on the order of 15 to 20. A transonic performance test was conducted in the Ames Research Center, ARC, 11-foot unitary tunnel in Phi 2011. The resulting data validated the design methodology and provided insights on the impact of large turbofan shapes on other aerodynamic considerations, such as control surfaces and variable area fan nozzles. 52 propulsion airframe aeroacoustic element phase 1 investigations for the PA element provided valuable insight in both performance and noise characteristics of key propulsion concepts integrated with the HWB advanced airframe concept. This configuration provided built in acoustic shielding by making efficient use of the large vehicle surface below the engine to prevent much of the engine noise from radiating to the ground especially when coupled with improved designs of nacelles, nozzles, and novel engine-slash-airframe installation effects. At the time, based on limited laboratory experiments and analytical predictions, it appeared that there was significant noise reduction potential due to shielding of both fan and jet noise if optimum engine placement could be determined and methods of enhancing shielding with nozzle, pylon, and airframe edge treatments and devices studied. 53 two complex-scale model aeroacoustic wind tunnel tests were completed in Phase 1. Both experiments provided high-fidelity acoustic data in a wind tunnel environment to validate improved predictive capabilities. In addition, these tests provided direct quantitative evidence that the HWB configuration, specifically designed for significant noise shielding, did provide cumulative noise reductions on the order of 17 decibels as predicted. These highly complex tests required hot jet propulsion simulation capability, to mimic the effects of aeroacoustic noise, that most low-speed wind tunnel facilities lacked. Coupled with a new phased array microphone technology, tests were undertaken in the La RC-14 by 22-foot subsonic tunnel and the Boeing Low Speed Aeroacoustic Facility, LSAF. The results quantified key installation parameters such as jet airframe spacing, jet flap interaction, pylon effects, sideline noise shielding from canted vertical tails, and other noise reduction concepts on the aeroacoustic signatures at low speeds. High-fidelity acoustic data acquired with microphone array technology developed for the HWB 14 by 22 foot wind tunnel tests was incorporated into noise prediction tools to provide more accurate assessments on the acoustic characteristics of any low-noise vehicle or component technology during flight. 54 Advanced Vehicle Concepts Element Although elements of the Phase 1 research portfolio offered significant improvements in both aircraft noise and fuel burn, it soon became abundantly clear that even applying all of the N plus 2 technologies then under consideration to an advanced tube and wing configuration would not meet all ERA goals. Doing so would require exploring radically new and innovative aircraft configurations. 55 The phase 1 investigations in this element focused on identifying and characterizing advanced vehicle concepts with the potential of meeting the ERA subsonic transport system level N plus 2 goals. The investigations were conducted via the N plus 2 Advanced Vehicle Concept NRA, with some in-house modeling support initially focused on the overwing nacelle concept in Phi 2010 and an alternative advanced concept in Phi 2011. Various propulsion technologies, open rotor, UHB, geared turbofan, GTF, etc. and vehicle configuration, HWB, high wing, over the wing nacelle, truss braced wing, etc. concepts were evaluated under this NRA. The advanced vehicle concepts identified through the NRA process identified the critical technologies that needed to be matured to TRL-6 by 2015 to enable entry into service, EIS, by 2025. These advanced vehicle concepts and their respective technology suites were incorporated into the analysis of alternative assessment and validation that informed the ERA Phase 2 portfolio formulation. 56 ERA Phase 2 planning the ERA project's Phase 2 ITD portfolio was defined to begin after complete tie-in of Phase 1 investigations, scheduled for October 1, 2012, and conclude on September 30, 2015. Development of the portfolio required input from a broad range of sources, including the ERA Phase 1 Project System Assessment, Phase 1 Technology Maturation, the Phase 1 N Plus 2 Advanced Vehicle Concepts NRA, ongoing armed project foundational research developments, and other national interests. Phase 2 planning began in October 2011 with the formation of the Phase 2 Tiger Team led by the ERA Project Chief Technologist Tony Washburn and Chief Engineer Mark Mangelsdorf. Their team included subject matter experts leading major efforts in the airframe technology, propulsion technology, and vehicle systems integration subprojects. The Tiger team identified IT opportunities that were feasible in the Phi 2013 Phi 2015 timeframe through dialogue with existing partners from Phase 1 and dialogue with governmental partners, FAA Clean, 
AFRL, and Air Mobility Command, as well as from the N plus 2 ABC. NRA results, specifically the FI 2013 FI 2015 Critical Technologies and TRL Maturation Roadmaps.57 Evaluating Candidate ITD Opportunities Selected ITD Opportunities were vetted both within NASA and with industry. The Tiger team held a technology review in February 2012 with technical representatives from ARMED, ISRP, and the implementing NASA centers. Another meeting of experts was held in March 2012, with representatives from the aviation industry, including aircraft and engine manufacturers, technology suppliers, academia, and other federal laboratories to vet candidate technologies under consideration and the candidate ITD demonstrations being considered. Additionally, NASA released a request for information, RFI, in January 2012 requesting inputs from the aviation community regarding areas of interest in the conduct of collaborative, 50-to-50 cost-share integrated technol Augie demonstrations. A rigorous technical and programmatic review and assessment process commenced at the completion of the internal and external technical reviews, and the RFI submission period closed. The candidate ITD opportunities were evaluated based on the following criteria. 1. Assess the candidate ITD technical benefit, contribution to the NASA subsonic transport system level metrics, scalability of the ITD technologies, including level of broad applicability to the fleet classes, ending TRL-industry interest, i.e., Partner Cost Share and Independent Research and Development, IRAD, 2. Assess ITD execution risk, technical risks included, middle.middle.itd complexity with respect to technology integration, child lenses and number of interfaces, intellectual property difficulty with respect to ease of negotiation of government use and public data rights, cost and schedule risks included, middle.partner contribution slash cost share, middle.facility and workforce availability, middle.acquisition method. Project managers conducted a benefit, risk, and cost analysis of all candidate ITDs, considering the following factors. Technical focus area, TFA, balance, individual system benefits contributions, best fuel burn, emissions, and noise, industry government partnerships, center balance other considerations included inputs from the ERA project subproject managers, phase 2 technical tiger team, the phase 2 technical review panel members, and the ISRP and armed leadership. The project manager's ITD portfolio recommendation was presented to armed leadership at the ERA Project Phase 2 Technology Tollgate meeting held on June 25, 2012. At this review, armed authorized the development of detailed implementation plans for the recommended ITD portfolio. The ERA deputy project manager led an ITD detail planning process that resulted in development of ITD driving technical requirements, a risk-informed budget and schedule with 80% confidence level, risk registries, and an ITD cost and schedule margin reserve.58 The Phase 2 portfolio achieved a significant and quantifiable measure of progress towards the National Research and Development Plan and ERA, ISRP Integrated Systems Research Goals. It encompassed a selection of ITDs that ERA planners believed would enable technology maturation in the N plus 2 timeframe, clear technology slash product transition paths via industry and other government agency, OGA, partnership cost share indicating high national interest, industry, and U.S. government commitment to mature the technology suite over the three years of ERA Phase 2, broad applicability across vehicle configurations, and high probability of transition into the fleet no later than 2025. The Phase 2 Key Decision Point, KDP2, review was held at NASA headquarters on September 26, 2012, following nearly 12 months of preparation. Satisfied with the results, Dr. Haiwan Shin authorized the ERA project to proceed with the selected ITDs. Each Phase 2 ITD was assigned an alphanumerical designation that identified the associated technical focus area and the technology demonstration concept proposed as shown in the two examples below. Note that the first digit represented the primary TFA and ITD impacts, and the second digit represented the secondary TFA and ITD impacts.59, 21A, dash technical focus area 2, advanced composites for weight reduction, technical focus area 1, innovative flow control concepts for drag reduction. Technology Demonstration Concept A, the first concept form related to address TFA 2 and 1, 21C, dash technical focus area, 2, advanced composites for weight reduction, technical focus area, 1, innovative flow control concepts for drag reduction, technology demonstration concept C, the third concept form related to address TFA 2 and 1, the phase 2 ITDs were managed under the same subproject structure as in phase 1. At subproject, dash 12A plus, AFC enhanced vertical tail, lead, and advanced wing flight experiment. 
Key Partner, Boeing Commercial, 21A, Damage Arresting Composite Demonstration. Key Partner, Boeing Commercial, 21C, Opt Flight Experiment. Key Partners, Flexis Incorporated in AFRL, PT Subproject, Dash 30A, Highly Loaded Front Block Compressor. Key Partner, General Electric, 35A, Second Gen UHB Propulsor Integration. Key Partner, Pratt & Whitney, 40A, Low Knox Fuel Flexible Combustor Integration. Key Partner, Pratt & Whitney, Vehicle Systems Integration Subproject, Dash 50A, Flap Edge and Landing Gear. Key Partner, Gulfstream, 51A, UHB Integration for HWB Aircraft. Key Partner, Boeing Commercial. The ERA project manager was accountable to the ISRP director with overall technical and programmatic management responsibility, including strategic and tactical direction. The deputy project manager was responsible for executing of the project plan and providing oversight of day-to-day operations. In Phase 2, the position of chief technologist from Phase 1 was replaced with a systems engineering and integration lead. The inclusion of a strong systems engineering leadership team was deemed critical to execution of Phase 2.60 Risk Management The ERA project developed and approved a continuous risk management slash risk-informed decision-making plan that tracked schedule, cost, and technical risks. The ERA risk management process tracked risks by milestone, annual performance goals, key performance parameters, technical maturation, and technical challenges. The ERA Risk Management Working Group served as the official forum for risk identification, assessment, and mitigation plan development. The ERA Risk Management Board was the project forum for risk evaluation, deliberation, classification, and control of project risks. The Phase 1 ERA technology portfolio was focused on validating the performance of technologies at the system level to TRL4. The design of experiments and system-level assessments validated technical performance to buy down the inherent risks of these advanced technologies. In Phase 2, the ERA project conducted ITDs that tested technologies at the system level, further maturing each new technology and validating technical performance at the airframe-slash-engine system level, which further reduced performance uncertainty as system complexity and scale increased. This further reduced overall risk. The ITD structure of the project required more specialization for Phase 2. The realization that each ITD was a project unto itself meant that risk had to be tracked and managed at the project level, ITD level, and subproject level simultaneously. For this reason, ERA managers introduced the Risk Management Panel, RMPM, concept for Phase 2, and additional risk managers were added to the organizational structure to assist in the control of risk at multiple levels of the project. 61 Technology Transfer A coherent plan for technology transition approach was essential to the success of the ERA project. Technology transfer was the primary means by which Project Act team members shared their research with stakeholders and with the aeronautics community at large. The ERA project pursued an overarching strategy of collaboration with industry, universities, and other government agencies to advance the TRL of the Phase 2 technology portfolio and achieve measurable progress towards NASA's N plus 2 subsonic transport system level metrics. Project results were appropriately disseminated and validated through a peer review process. NASA transferred data and or hardware to end-user customers for use throughout the life of the project. Data transfer took place via technology interchange meetings and membership on key technical working groups in industry, academia, and other government agencies, in addition to specific requirements and agreements with partners.6262. IBIT, Boeing's elegant subsonic ultra-green aircraft research, Sugar, Volt concept was among the many early designs examined by the NASA Aeronautics Research Mission Directorate in April 2010 for its NRA-funded studies into advanced aircraft that could enter service in the 2030-2035 timeframe. NASA.